we always start with the Drama Mama theme song. So let's enjoy, without any further ado, the Drama Mama theme song. Let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> We got a new drama mama. Isn't the theme song fantastic? Listen, we got a theme song for almost every segment we do. This one's one of the best, isn't it? Gotta love it. Welcome, my lovely, lovely imps. Uh, if you are if you are new to my show, welcome. This is another Drama Mama episode. Uh, on Drama Mama, we uh, try to get to the bottom of popular culture or internet culture drama. Um, and we try to do so as impartially as possible. We look at all the receipts. We look at all the stuff that happened. And then at the end, we try to work out a, a, a reasonable and, uh, and well-reasoned or well-evidenced, I should say, conclusion. So that's what we do on Drama Mama. And today, we're going to be talking about Will Smith and the slap heard round the world. Now, there's a lot to talk about with regard to this particular topic. Every person on the planet, except for me, has given their take on it. And I, being very wise, waited because I wanted to hear what lots of people have to say. I wanted to, you know, weigh different opinions. And also I had a lot of other important things to talk about. I talk about politics a lot. So, you know, drama isn't always given the front seat, but we do that here in Drama Mama. So welcome. So what, what are we, what are, what is the, what is the summary of everything that happened? Well, the summary is recently, a, a event called the Academy Awards. It's it's you know, not not exactly the most famous event in the world. Certainly not the main attraction of the film industry, um, in any given year. Obviously, the Academy Awards are inc an incredibly, incredibly star-studded, incredible amount of money, high prestige, the most regal event in all of Hollywood. It is when. Uh, the awards for the best picture, for all of the best stuff, gets handed out every year, and a huge media buzz surrounds it every single time. In the past, there have been uh, all kinds of types of drama and nonsense and disagreements that happen. It's a giant spectacle, and everybody talks about their favorite movies and fights about it for a whole bunch of time. But this year, something went awry. Something went wrong this year, and violence was brought before the eyes of the uh, of the, the 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 Hollywood uh, celebrities who are who are so far from violence at any given time. Violence reared its ugly head in our face in the form of the slap. Okay, the slap. Now, um, it's interesting because for a lot of people. Their introduction to the slap was the censored version. Did you know that? That the network censored the slap quite quickly. And they just sort of like said, oh, it happened. Thankfully, uncensored footage does exist. So we are going to watch this atrocious violence immediately. Okay? We have to see it. Okay? We have to watch with our own eyes. So... If, if you are faint of heart, if you have never seen someone slap someone else in the world, close your eyes and ears now. Because what you are about to see is what has been called the slap heard round the world. Okay, everybody? So be ready. Be ready. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Whoa. Oh. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Will Smith did it. Yeah, I did it. You took my name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yeah, 
It was a G.I. Jane joke. G.I. Jane のジョークだったんです。I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I could, oh, okay. That was the greatest night in the history of television.、Okay. Okay. So we are here. Okay, so we are here. Okay, so we are here. o k a i v e a d o c u m e n t a r y o u t t o g i v e a n o s c a r o u t s o t h a t w a s i t e v e r y b o d y t h a t s w h a t h a p p e n e d y o u k n o w s o Uh, uh, Chris Rock makes a joke about the fact that Will Smith's wife, Jada Plinkett Smith, looks like、uh, a character from the movie G.I. Jane. Now, if some of you go, What the hell does that mean? Let me show you. Okay? Look at this. I can show you. Okay? G.I. Jane. Here you go. Is a movie, an old movie, okay, an old Rid Ridley Scott film about Demi Moore、uh, becoming a soldier and she has to shave her hair at one point, okay? It's an ancient, ancient fucking meme, okay? Old, mo older movie, been around a while, okay? And for those of you who don't know, who might not be like into celebrity culture, This is what Jada Plinkett Smith looks like, okay? I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of pictures of her, okay? As you can see, there is very little hair on her head. And so, you know, you compare that to this. Haha, <laughs> get it? Pinkett, sorry, Pinkett, I'm sorry. I, I keep saying Plinkett, I'm so sorry. Pinkett, I'm so sorry. That's my bad. It's because of. It's because of Uh, of, of the red letter media character named Plinkett. Okay? I'm very sorry.、Uh, that is just a misspeak. You might go, okay, so the joke, the joke was that Jada Pinkett Smith is bald. And also, Demi Moore's character in G.I. Jane is bald. And you might go, okay, like that just kind of seems like a lazy joke.、Um, but then. Why would, why would he get hit over that? So you kind of have to go, like, what the hell? So why would this prompt a slap? And the answer is a little bit more complicated than you might think. As it turns out, Jada Pinkett Smith、uh, is pretty serious about talking about hair. And、um, for those who are not in the know, Um, Jada Pinkett Smith has been relatively open about the fact、um, that she has、uh, a condition that causes her hair to fall out in certain spots. It's an autoimmune condition、um, that, uh, that, that where your body accidentally attacks your own hair pores and the hairs fall out. It's called alopecia.、Um, and there, it's, it's a relatively common condition. Um, there are many forms of alopecia, and this one is a autoimmune form of alopecia. And、um, it, it, it's, it's not really like pattern baldness. It is, a,、uh, it is like more like you get patches of your hair that fall out, so you have little bald spots here and there. And,、um, and Jada Pinkett Smith has been pretty open about this, about having this condition. Um, in fact, as far as I could tell, I went and did some research.、Um, Jada, Jada Pinkett Smith has been talking about her struggles with alopecia since、um, last, like early last year. Is it alopecia or alopecia? I, I say, I've always said it alopecia. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. I apologize if my pronunciation isn't perfect. I,、uh, I often get pronunciations incorrect because there's lots of words, okay? Um, uh, so, so, uh, so there's some sensitivity on that front, okay? Also, there is、uh, a sort of other topic that has come up in response to this, which is,、um, well, actually, there's been a lot. In fact, let me just sort of show you something real quick. Um, Let me just show you this real quick because、uh, this is kind of wild. 
So I was when I was doing my research for this for this take a look at this This was this happened. This event happened on the 27th of March. So that was fucking seven days ago and the article on Wikipedia is fucking enormous. Holy fuck. 118 citations for an, for an article that appeared seven days ago. Okay? Just wild. Whew. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a lot. And, of course, there's the iconic picture. Here's the, 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 the picture that was, you know, the slap heard around the world. And I'm not kidding you. I keep saying that because they a lot of people are calling, calling it that. They're literally saying it's the slap heard around the world. It's in this article that that's that. Yeah, here we go. Uh, within three hours... It was the uh, the video was the number one on YouTube's trending page within three hours in the U.S., U.K., and Australia, and many other countries. Many media refer outlets referred to the altercation as the slap heard around the world, which is wild. For those of you who don't know, the shot heard around the world is a reference to the first shot fired in the American Revolution. <laughs> okay. The shot heard around the world is the first bullet shot in the American Revolution. So, um, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit of sensationalism, okay? M maybe, m maybe just a little, little bit of sensationalism, okay? <laughs> um... We're going to look as, as once we get out of the main receipt section, we're going to talk about some of the other responses. Uh, I recently heard it referred to as the 9-11 for comedians, which is um, a lot. That's a, It's a lot to process. Um, and, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh... <laughs> Oh, okay. So there's a couple of things out here that have been a little bit funny and wild. Okay. But, but, but let's, let's, let's keep it reeled in. Okay. So like I was saying, um, like I was saying, uh, there was a lot of people talking about this. There was a lot of responses to it. Now, one of the other things that was sort of like widely discussed with regard to the slap um, is, uh, it was, was Jada, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's history of talking about, uh, what some people call, uh, texturism, what some people call, uh, you know, natural hair discrimination, what some people call, some people just call it plain racism. Um, Jada Pinkett Smith has talked about this on numerous occasions. The fact that, uh, when uh after after she sort of had her big rise to fame um she was in the matrix for example um that after her big rise to fame one of the things that kept happening was she kept getting asked to change her hair okay so basically she you know jada pinkett smith is a black woman she has curly hair um she has very curly hair and uh and Every time she would go to, to do a film, she would be asked to straighten her hair, to cut it short, to, to not have it be its natural texture. And for those of you who aren't in the know, um, I assume many of you know about this, this is a recurring issue. There are all kinds of, like, many, many workplaces in the United States forbid natural hairstyles. And when they call it a natural hairstyle, they're specifically talking about black people they're specifically saying if you're black we can tell you to change your hair because we put it in the rules when you got hired this is a really common issue all across um the united states it is really common it's especially common in industries where um uh, where it's especially common in industries where uh, people are going to be taking lots of photos, aka modeling, film, 
acting, all of these things. And yeah, some people explicitly ban locks. Some places ban uh, like the Afro uh, style. A lot of, lot of, it, it's just, it's, uh, it, it's yes. It is basically a lot of white business owners still to this day pushing white beauty standards forcibly onto black people and making and and keep in mind this is not just like it's not just oh change your hair it's not easy to straighten your hair if your natural hairstyle is not straight it's expensive time consuming uncomfortable damages your hair so and and yet it is uh it is it has been well studied that there are uh not just policies against this but passive discrimination based on natural hairstyle now um, so the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people brought this up, um, including, uh, I mean, lots of people brought this up. The discussion around whether this joke was insensitive because, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith has been so open. Um, there was a statement, uh, by Jada Pinkett Smith in which, uh, she said that, uh, like her experience in Hollywood was was constantly being told to change her hair and so when she started when her hair started falling out she said i'm gonna shave my hair totally fl totally totally shaved i'm gonna go totally bald because i want to have my hair the way i want it i don't want anybody else to tell me how to do my hair and to be completely honest i think that's really reasonable you know um like, I, I think that it's really reasonable to have a fuckload of complaints about discrimination based on something you can't help. And it's something we don't think about. Like, like I say that we, I mean, our society doesn't think about all that often as a whole. There are a lot of people who talk about it, but it rarely ever actually gets much attention. It's not given much seriousness. And people even make fun of the idea of, like, hair-based discrimination, even though it's, it's, well it's well backed up by research well we know this happens and we also know you can just go search right now look up what it looks what it, what it costs to get a hair straightening um like a hair straightening done if you have curly hair we're talking hundreds of dollars hundreds of dollars that you only have to spend so that you can get a job while being black or while having uh you know curly very curly hair if you're not black but it's it's a lot of black people who get targeted like for that this. so i wanted to explain specifically this angle of talking about why some people would find it a little sus to make fun of the hairstyle of a celebrity who has regularly um who has regularly talked about the issues she's dealt with with hair discrimination the issues that she's dealt with with her own hair um, I just wanted people to understand that, to give credit to the people who, uh, um, who analyze that. And yes, uh, Jada, Jada Pinkett Smith also, uh, has been very open over the last year and a half or so, uh, about her dealing with alopecia, which is a type of baldness, um, or alopecia refers to sort of selective, uh, baldness. Um, and, and, and she happens to have a, a type of alopecia that is autoimmune. So it's sort of sporadic. There are bald spots that appear on your head. It's very difficult to deal with. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. And as a result, ju I'm just resetting this back out. Um, she chose uh, in 2021 to start wearing her hair shaved because that is what she felt was very powerful and empowering to her. And a lot of people have been frustrated with that. Now, somebody from the chat asked me before uh, we had the brief interruption, they asked me, well, isn't uh, hairstyle one of the things that you know you would sort of think about while you're casting a film and that is true to a to a degree yes um but that said there are very few circumstances in which the a a a applicant or or a a somebody who's auditioning for the role who's trying to get a role that their current hairstyle really matters um and like like they can change their hairstyle for the movie um but there's a difference when you're expected to always wear your hair a certain way or else you won't even be considered for movies and that is something that happens a lot that is a that is a like a lot that happens a lot 
Um, yeah, wigs exist, of course, but there's a whole wig industry, of course, and of course, wigs are used all the time in films, some bad ones, some good ones, et cetera, et cetera. But the reality is that, like, it's unique, it's, it's unique to, to black women, not entirely unique to black women, but it is, uh, largely focused on black women's hairstyles being sort of preemptively discriminated against, even in the selection process. And... Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, and, and yeah, exactly. As, as someone else from chat, K-Prime brings up, it's, it's a whole thing in the industry that a lot of industry stylists don't know how to style 4C hair, which is curly hair, um, that a lot of black women have. And, um, it's, it's just, it is an issue, okay? And I want people to understand that that's a very... At unironically a very serious issue that uh that i think people should think about and that people should uh uh be thinking about but we have to talk about what actually happened in the event i just wanted to present a couple of interesting things going into this before we start to do any sort of takes or anything like that again in drama mama i always try to lay it all out um and and uh you know, I try to lay it all out before we jump into anything. Uh, Northside Star asks, uh, I asked in good faith, mind you. I'm just not really familiar with the process of the industry. Also, could it be that the same for piercings, tattoos, and weight? It absolutely is the same for piercings, tattoo, tattoos, and weight. Um, there are a lot of people who are, uh, who are like physically heavier get typecast just because they're a heavier person, aka they will never be given certain roles because they happen to be heavier that is an absolutely a thing that happens um but again it's kind of another way in which we see that there's a lot of discriminatory practices in general as opposed to like the same phenomenon they're two different things that are fixated on oh i get that i get that also he went off script with the joke okay well we're gonna get into that so so, the next things I want to talk about was the sort of immediate reaction. Now, uh, there is a, a sort of lot of things that happened afterwards. Um, <laughs> one of the things that made me laugh was that people were, a lot of people were commentating on the fact that, um, that Will Smith went on to have a very good night. Um, so for the rest of the of the night at the academy so first of all there was a kerfluffle as to whether or not will smith had been left asked to leave the oscars um and as it tur as it turns out it appears that he was asked to leave um but that he refused to leave and also that basically um that uh, basically uh despite the fact that he was asked to leave they didn't want to make a scene and when when chris rock was asked about it chris rock said he refused to file any sort of um any sort of police report which i think is really reasonable okay there was a lot of people who oddly enough were very i i saw like comments and stuff this is just average people so this is not like news articles writing about this but i saw comments of people who were angry that chris rock didn't file a police report which to me seems very odd seeing as how uh, I don't think a police report needs to be filed for like a minor physical altercation in any in any case. But a lot of people were pretty mad about that. Um, yeah, they were mad that he didn't. It's it's very weird. Um, so what it what seems to have happened is that yes, the Oscars did ask Will Smith to leave after the physical altercation, which again seems rel quite reasonable. Uh, somebody hit one of your other guests physically you getting asked to leave is pretty reasonable but he didn't really want he didn't he didn't go with it because of course he had other things to do that night um and he didn't want to leave the party which again i find that odd if you were offended enough uh i don't know why you wouldn't just leave but okay that's what happened um so that was like a whole thing that people were obsessed about which i think is meaningless personally i don't think it really matters whether or not uh, he was asked to leave whether he did. I don't think that really says anything. I don't think there's anything revealing to be held there. Um, however, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of, uh, immediate backlash to 
uh, to the event and to what it meant. And this is where things get very strange because uh, in the sort of aftermath of this slap, there has been an endless cycle of commentary in which I am also engaging right now for the record. Um, yeah, uh, which I am also in, in, sort of engaged in at the moment. I am doing commentary on the event. But let me just give you a quick quote, okay? I want to quote you um, a, a little bit. I want to quote you something that to me seemed a little bit a little bit interesting. And I think that this will sort of point um, to where we're, where, where the conversation around this has been, okay? Um, let me just read this. Okay, listen to this. This is an excerpt from uh, the Wikipedia article, okay? And this is citing um, a New Yorker writer. Uh, Near 1 a.m., Will Smith was filmed dancing at the Vanity Fair after party as a DJ played Will Smith's song, Gettin' Jiggy With It. Writing in the New Yorker, a, p a fellow partygoer by the name of Michael Shulman observed, in a Hollywood ending that seemed too dark and surreal to be true, Smith appeared to be having the time of his life. Bone chilling. B fucking bone chilling, everybody. So, this is why I felt it was necessary for us to have a bit of a drama mama about it. Okay? Because, let's just be real, the dialogue on either side of this has been unchained. Okay? It has been motherfucking unchained i have heard the conspiracy theories but we're not going to jump into the conspiracy theories right away okay okay so you've seen the harrowing video and now we need to see the response okay we need to talk about some of the responses okay um I have to give a little bit of credit here, okay? Because we're going to listen. We're going to listen in and hear something that I think is like, you know, relative, again, relatively interesting. And we're not going to listen to this for very long, but I have to give some credit. Chud Logic was the one who who tuned me into this. And I, I he watched this on his stream talking about this, but I thought it would be interesting for us to have a listen to from a different angle. Let's see. Let me just grab this real quick, okay? Here we go. Hey guys. So... This is a little snippet from a a comedy podcast that is run by David Spade and Dan and Dana Carvey. Uh, some of you may know these guys are are kind of comedians that have been around for a while, and they decided to do a little commentary on it. And I, I heard this through Chud Logic again, credit where credit is due, and I wanted us all to listen to it because I think it gives an idea of how people are talking about this and something that I want to comment on as we go through this. So let's listen in and just hear for ourselves real quick, okay? This is uh, David Spade and Dana Carvey, and before we get into Ben Stiller, we just wanted to share a few thoughts about the other night with the Will Smith uh, Rock situation. Rock is obviously a buddy of ours. We had him on here a little bit ago, and we have a common denominator, which is being bullied growing up. I was a f certified pipsqueak uh, and always being pushed around, and it, it really hit a nerve with me and Dana also, and Rock had talked about it on this um, podcast. Um, I could jokingly say that slap in the face was a real slap in the face for comedy, but it is true that um, on a serious note, this, this is a dangerous precedent. Um, that was the straw that broke Will Smith's back. I, it, it couldn't have been. A, a medium rough joke, uh, just bad timing. It was like a jack in the box that you hear. And here's Chris Rock. So that was just the one where he decided to flip and not sure what Will's going through. I met him, seems like a decent enough guy. Okay. Uh, I'd love to see him in a roast. I mean, listen, comedy is rough. I just did a comedy special for Netflix and it's, there's some stuff in there that makes me laugh. People could get offended by. It's just the way it is. I hope roasts aren't outlawed soon. Outlawed, huh? <laughs> I mean, my God. Um, I don't know. I just thought it dimmed some light on the other performers that night. You didn't really think about any other performer, anybody that won. It was just that. 
and they allowed him on stage again. I, I didn't, I probably wouldn't have. Not a lot of defense of Chris right there and then at the show. Like other people are, people are standing up and giving Will a standing ovation. Like nothing happened. I thought that was all very odd. I do, and I honestly just don't think he should have been able to go get his award. I hate to say it, but there's got to be some consequence because you shouldn't be allowed to do that. Dana? <laughs> well, first of all, um, you know, I've seen real anger and experiences. So Hello, the first Aaron thing Green. I thought was I was triggered because everyone talks about triggers when I mm. saw a very large person go, sure. go full shit house physical on a person who's not small, but much smaller. And that just like, whoa, viscerally just hit me. So I saw a bully. I was just yeah, taken too. back to my childhood. And, you know, I, when I entered high school, I was five feet tall, 93 pounds. Huh. You know, I looked like a fetus with shoes. But my point is... <laughs> it's true. Me too, dude. I, I, that, yeah. I, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I played one on TV. But this was not about Chris Rock. It was not about the joke. Something else is going on, especially the second time Will said, keep... You're, keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. The energy and rage and anger of that was so extreme. So I don't really know, but mental health is a thing that I would just say needs help. Secondarily, where was security? Could anyone else have gotten away with that? It was very awkward. Um, and then to give him a standing ovation, he had 45 minutes to kind of pull it together. He had Denzel Washington talking to him, other really smart people, Bradley Cooper, mm -hmm. but he couldn't pull it together to apologize and said, sort of doubled down. I protect women. Um, yeah. So the word protect was heavy in there. Yeah, I'm protecting. And then the next morning, he got that ring, ring. Uh, hi, this is your publicist, uh, Brian, and uh, maybe we should talk, you know, because then there was the apology. So I just looked at it as a bully. It triggered me. And, uh, I think it was uh, kind of horrific and just felt bad. Chris is our friend and our colleague. <laughs> and I don't want to see anybody slap like that at any time on television, especially or anywhere. David? Yeah, it's funny, you know, Dana, when you get older, uh, like us, we, we, when we were bullied, and I know Rock was bullied as a kid, a little skinny kid, and he said he really, it really stuck with him. And it does. It's, it's mm. the root of a lot of things, I, I, you know, get me mad. I have a short temper. And, any bullying in, in a car cutting me off or a guy, if I'm on a date, coming up to me and looking at me and going, okay, I could take this guy. And so I'll hit on this girl right in front of him. Those little forms of it are there mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. So when I saw that obvious, just walk up, hit him and walk away and almost like laughing, like, fuck you, what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. It made me spin out like, oh my God. So it bothered me all night. Uh, I thought Chris was pretty cool about it, of course. But what do you do? Your mind's spinning. I'm on live TV. A billion people. What, what's happening? You know, what do I go down? Do I hit him back? Do I? I couldn't even read the prompt after that. I'd probably be going, I, I got to get out Chris, of here. This uh, is Chris handled nuts. it perfectly. And well, I yeah. give him a lot of credit for keeping it together after something like that. You know, I, I actually thought Will Smith would walk up if if, if he was staying. And he's joking around laughing, which was sort of more crazy in my head or more. That's not a good word, but it was just more unusual. And then mm -hmm. when he got his award, mm -hmm. I would have said, what the fuck was I doing with Chris Rock? That was not sorry. Yeah, I thought, you know, I thought that it, for sure. It, yeah. The jokes got to me. I fucking how stupid I'm going to go back and tell him right now. Thank you for this award. Whatever. Any acknowledgement would have just taken all the pressure out and gone. It was nuts. We'll still talk about it. But hey. Something else is going on clearly, and I'm sure Chris is your friend. Like it just all, it it was all tough to watch. So I don't have a ton to say about it other than uh, what we just said. I mean, it'll all work out. Everyone will walk away, but definitely an odd moment in time. You know, before that moment, of course, my relationship with Will Smith was just from afar as a very likable, up positive person. So it was it was it's disturbing on so many levels. It gave everyone a relief from Very COVID and, and, and Ukraine, <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. the whole culture has been rotated on, on this moment because it was so shocking. And I really it's just- uh, More shocking than COVID and Ukraine. Uh, I don't know. I, it's, still, it's still going I'm on. Very, has, I am extremely disturbed. I am very, what? Am I not disturbing enough for the disturbing club? hasn't spoken at this hour yeah. yeah 
I hope they uh, make up. They seem to be, it seems they're friends and uh, <laughs> like them to get back to that uh, and have everyone live happily ever after. It's tough to live with that hanging over your head if you think someone's out there after you. Hey, Lady Gaga, oh, is who's beautiful, but she's always <laughs> working with really old people. Like she gets next to Tony Bennett. She looks like a high school senior. <laughs> Last night they wheel out Lisa, Liza Minnelli, poor sweet woman. And then Lady Gaga looks like she's in eighth grade. It's a, I don't know, it's, it's a, uh, I know. Us Magazine immediately did who wore it better and who looked better, uh, and that was unfair. Um, also, Dana, Regina, uh, one of the hosts, beautiful, lovely woman, she did a bit that I have to say as an observer, I'm for all forms of comedy, but if everyone else gets to complain, if it's a male host bringing the prettiest actresses up to analyze them and take them backstage for them, COVID yeah. test, then pat them down, it just wouldn't fly. I mean, I don't care. They're writing what? bits. Someone in the room should have gone, what if someone doesn't love this idea? But listen, fine, fine, fine. I just have to say it because I don't care. Mm -hmm. Just either let everyone do comedy in general, men, women, or just don't. But you can't say, you can't do this. <laughs> Guys, either let men and women do comedy or don't. Either women get to do comedy or no women get to do comedy. One of the two. Pick a side, everybody. Is you can do that. That's all. Mm -hmm. You agree? Uh, totally agree. It was uh, it was really surprising. Maybe the Oscars are coming back now. If they have more more fights, more mm -hmm. politically incorrect things, and they go just ape shit, you know, maybe it'll become a huge winner again. I don't know. I mean, the only thing that could have been bigger would be a melee. Chris yeah. fights back, and then you've got Nicole Kidman, who knows her way around the block. You've got Keith Urban coming up. Yeah. You've got Ke Costner probably with a shotgun stopping the whole fight. Tyler yeah. Perry would have gotten in there. So Joe Jonas is ripped. He would have come down. Yeah. There's a lot of people that have been trained to do movies like that where they have training wow. so they can yeah. come in and send them. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if Keanu was there. He needed to be. Um, Damn, Keanu Reeves would have saved the day, everybody. It, it must yeah. have been tough for Chris to sit in the back and realize literally nothing happened. No one walked up, no security, no stop the show, no. It was just like, on with the show, this is it. Standing ovation for the Standing league. ovation. Yeah. You know, it's hard to pull for the bully. I don't know, Will Smith, probably a great guy. Just in that particular instance, it was the I've bad guy I've talked to, to people who grew up not bullied because they were bigger at a young age and so yeah, forth and so on. Or maybe their it. father didn't bully them. They're like, what? Yeah, what? they don't get it. They didn't, they didn't get it. Um, but that's what my takeaway was. But I wish everyone the best in the end of the day. So I'm not a negative Nancy. No. It'll, we'll, we'll all land on our feet. Hmm. So... <sighs> So it's been interesting and odd, okay? It's been it's been odd. Some of the conversation around this has been a little strange. And I do find the language that people use around this to be even weirder. You guys remember when I was talking about how weird I find it when people utilize like the language of abuse and stuff and apply it to like situations that they're watching? Um like I think it's I think it's really weird to project your history of bullying onto a sort of uh, a random altercation between two people. I think that's pretty weird. I think it's weird to project that on. I think it's weird that everybody is talking about this like it was a literal murder uh, that happened on live air when in reality it was a slap. Um, I find that odd, even though... I think I can understand, and I'm going to talk about this, where a lot of people are coming from with regard to being anti-slap. You know? It's just, I think it's important for us to realize, like, how the conversation is going about this. And, of course, when you take to websites like Twitter and, and stuff like that, you start to see a lot of ferocity in the comments. And, you know, uh... There's just, oh God, there's just a lot, of, even in the comments here, um, people calling Chris Rock a hero, people saying Will is an abuser, 
I've heard people sort of, uh, I've heard people like speculate that, that Will Smith is, is an abuser or being abused. I've heard both things totally speculated just off the cuff because of a hit. But we're going to get to all of that in full. Next, I want to continue along the timeline. And I want to talk about the response that happened, um, the response that happened, uh, uh, between uh the academy and will smith so first off uh before anybody like formally publicly responded to it uh jada jada pinkett smith posted this the the like night after the event so this is this is something um interesting so this was the night after the event jada posted on instagram this is a season for healing and I'm here for it. Now, with 273,000 likes, you might sort of um you might sort of realize that a lot of people got uh uh irked, maybe is the best way of putting it. A lot of people got irked by this. And again, I'm going to start with this by saying that like it's the reaction has been odd. Posting this on, on Instagram and having this make the news. Unironically, if I search right now, um, time for healing Jada Smith, there will be th like hundreds of articles about this. Look, I can show you. Jada Smith says it's time for healing. Jada Smith says it's a season for healing. Reuters, uh, Daily Record, Jada P Pinkett Smith says it's a time for healing, a season of healing. Uh, it's time for healing, healing, healing. Everybody fixating on this random, probably scheduled post. I can't help but feel like that post may have been scheduled and just went live. Every news network was talking about this. And, and the... We, we saw some of the reactions the other day when I was reacting to conservatives. People who were like, yeah, Jada is is manipulating. You can see that, you know, she thinks that, th that, that what was done was correct. Just blatantly psychologizing off of a random post like this. What I'm saying is that immediately after this issue happened... Every, seemingly every person on the entire planet was projecting their own personal traumas and, and fear onto this issue that happened. And it is really weird, okay? So there is just, I mean, the responses are wild. I could go and look at this. I mean, we watched this the other day. Let me give you another example of what I'm talking about. We watched some of the just sort of everyday people responses. Just the other day on this stream, we watched like a Christian response to this. And I want to just pop in for a second so you can hear the sort of level of shit that's being talked about. Okay? Uh, let me see if I can. It's this guy right here. Hold on. Let's take a look at it. Let me see if I can grab this guy's video. Here we go. This is the video we watched. I want us to review it again because it was so telling. This is a Christian, a Christian YouTuber who got whose video got about fifty-one thousand views, which said Ahab and Jezebel vibes from Will and Jada Smith. Okay, and I want you just to listen to a few minutes of this and understand what we're talking, what I'm trying to get at here. Okay. Jake, I thought it was an interesting point to bring up. Now I've been seeing a couple of posts. Um, in the aftermath of all this, you know, everybody's got an opinion. People are making videos. Um, and this one is pretty interesting. Uh, I'll post a little screenshot here so you can see it. But it has over 10,000 shares. He says, I'm not a fan of this woman. I didn't want to put her name in my mouth. Any seasoned man knows what it looks like when another man is being led without a partner. If this mm. woman can roll her eyes without speaking and transform her husband from laughing to anger, why didn't she use that same power to stop her so-called man? Will walk slow enough to be stopped. I didn't hear his partner make a peep. He says, man, we have to do better. We skip down to, he says, uh, by the way, her next social media post was about herself, how she's ready for healing season again, not about the man that defended her arm. Do you see? Do you see what this guy's going on about? He's mad that apparently for posting it was time for a season of healing, this apparently to him betrays that Jada Pinkett Smith is a selfish person who isn't posting about her man but instead is fixated on herself because of the post i just showed you 
because of that little wine mom Instagram post. Okay? Hmm. Let's continue. Let's hear what else he's got to say. No apologies, no outreach. For some reason, I'm not surprised. Uh, you know, it's all about her. Uh, you've looked at, you know, her red table talks and people said, okay, you know, the husband's supposed to defend, you know, his wife's honor, but where was her, where was she defending her husband during these red table talks where she's openly talking about, you know, her entanglements. Then there was all the memes of him, uh, you know, crying and people were joking about, you know, the things that she was saying. And, you know, she was just really um, embarrassing him. Any real man knows like, yo, you know, they wouldn't be too fond, you know, if their woman just out there doing that. All right. And then I've seen this other post. Um, they made like a little movie poster kind of thing. You can see it right here. G.I. Jane to the entanglement. They're calling Will, you know, a simp. I personally believe that Will Smith just had a breaking point. And there is some kind of Ahab Jezebel thing. Now, I told you guys before I've read his book. So for those of you who don't know, this is a reference to the story of Jezebel in the Bible. We discovered this on our Christian conservative react segment the other day, but I thought it fit into here pretty well. Um, as you can see, this guy has now projected entirely onto, onto Jada Pinkett Smith, the character of Jezebel. Jezebel being a, a, a biblical woman who was known for being insubordinate to her husband, for being like a, the queen. She was, I described her previously as a girl boss, she kind of is a girl boss. She was a queen who was very, very powerful. She was the ruler. She disobeyed her husband. She fucked lots of people. Um, she was like the, a biblical girl boss. And of course, Christians see her as a villainous character in many ways. Um, a very, very big vi villainous character. But this Christian here has now determined that Jada Pinkett Smith must be sort of controlling her husband and making the world around her because she's a Jezebel-like figure in his mind. Hmm. Interesting. Let's keep going. At the end of his book, he clearly was into witchcraft. There's no doubt about it. He's like sitting in a the hut. They give him some kind of drug. He's opening himself, you know, to all kinds of these spirits. And he talks about in the book, you know, the stuff that was going on with his wife, the separation, the ups and downs. And anybody that's been looking over the last two years, you know, he's been the butt of a lot of jokes just because of the things that she's been saying, the things that she's been doing. And we all know that if the shoe was on the other foot, right, Will Smith would be getting attacked. But a lot of women were like, do we know that? Like, what do you mean? Would you, you would be attacking Will Smith? Maybe. I don't, I don't know that you can say this. Like, what do you mean the, the, the shoe is on the other foot? Like, you're just speculating wildly on this woman's life and projecting bi biblical morality onto it. So we're not going to watch any more of this guy because he's more or less given us his take. He does go on to talk about, um, you know, hitting kids and teaching them not to misbehave and things like that, which is very, very weird. But that's not really important to what we're talking about today. What I'm trying to show you is that in the response to this... um. In the response to this, there's been a weird amount of fixation on psychoanalyzing Jada. Jada, who didn't slap anybody. Jada, who was the butt of the joke. And yet, somehow, and she hasn't really even barely said anything about the incident. But because of her husband, she's having all this shit sort of projected onto her. It's very, very odd. Now, of course, there's plenty of psychoanalyzing being done on Will Smith and Chris Rock as well, which is it, which is also there. But keep in mind that Will Smith and Chris Rock were the people involved. Like, Jada Pinkett Smith is only involved because her husband got mad at a joke made at her expense, a joke that apparently she found quite hurtful, which I think we can understand for a second why that joke might be considered hurtful, right? We discussed the fact that she's experienced discrimination based on her hair and that she recently um, came, you know, recently discovered that, that she's going to be bald for the rest of her life in some way or another because of her genetic condition. That's a really hard thing to deal with. So it's understandable that she would have a negative reaction to someone making fun of that, right? But keep in mind, she didn't slap Chris Rock. 
Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. So why is there so much weird psychoanalysis being done tying the blame back to Jada Pinkett Smith? And by the way, a lot of the analysis has been focusing on this, has been focusing on the sort of chivalry angle that she is wanting her man to go and do this shit, despite the fact we don't really know that that's the case. There's no real evidence at the moment that that's the case. It's just gossip, but the gossip gets magnified. As you can see, the article on this slap, it has 118 citations from a fucking week ago. This shit, everybody's talking about this shit, and it seems like everybody in the world is projecting their shit onto every aspect of this entire drama. And that can make it very interesting. And it also has the result of producing people like going to war with their friends over this issue. And and also it has the result of people having completely unhinged takes. Um, God, there the takes have been all over the place on this. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, K-Prime says, okay, was it vagina magic or was it brain mind drugs? Wh who was really the, the culprit? Isn't it a little bit weird? I don't know. <laughs> Let's continue, shall we? Okay. So, uh, most recently, the most sort of recent development in this, or sorry, I should say the next development in this was that Will Smith offered a public apology. And we're going to read this public apology real quick. Okay. Here we go. This is from Will Smith's Instagram. This was posted, um, uh, the night i believe the night or the day after the event so let's read will smith's apology okay here we go violence in all of its forms is poisonous and destructive my behavior at last night's academy awards was unacceptable and inexcusable jokes at my expense are part of the job but a joke about jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear and i reacted emotionally i would like to publicly apologize to you chris I was out of line and I was wrong. I am embarrassed and my actions were not indicative of the man I want to be. There is no place for violence in a world of love and kindness. I also would like to apologize to the Academy, the producers of the show, all the attendees, and everyone watching around the world. I would like to apologize to the Williams family and to my King Richard family. I deeply regret that my behavior has stained what would have been an otherwise gorgeous journey for all of us. I am a work in progress. Sincerely, Will. No article read mentioned the apology. Now, I don't want to say there's a reason for that, but there is a reason for that, which is to say that an apology does not get very good, does not tend to get very good uh, <laughs> re re reviews, okay? There's, <laughs> apologies are, are boring, quote unquote, okay? They're boring, all right? Uh, people don't like that. They want to see the blood. They want to see the fighting, you see? So when the apology actually happens, people just continue to talk about their weird projections. And it's very unfortunate because I actually think this is a relatively solid apology. I think this more or less addresses everything I would look for in an apology. Let's take a look at it. Violence in all of its forms is, po is poisonous and destructive. He acknowledges that what he did was violent and that he does not think that violent is good. My behavior was unacceptable and excusable, totally owning the thing that he did. He explains that he reacted emotionally, and then he offers a direct apology to Chris. He offers a direct apology to the Academy, the, the people who worked very hard on the show, all of the people there, and the people who he stole the, the spotlight from. Because keep in mind, he was there to accept an award on behalf of this film which I think is a real thing we want to talk about. Yeah, and, and um, I, I, I think this is a pretty strong apology as far as apologies go. But also, I want to point something else out, which is that that's not the end of it. Because Will Smith has also tendered a resignation from the Academy uh, of, of, of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. 
So let's take a look at this real quick. Will Smith resigns from the Academy after slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. The, t the producer of the telecast, Will Packer, said that Smith had been asked to leave after slapping Rock and that he urged officials not to physically remove the actor. Will Smith, who slapped the comedian Chris Rock at the Oscars, said Friday that he was resigning from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, saying that he had betrayed its trust and with conduct that was shocking, painful, and inexcusable. The sudden announcement came late Friday afternoon, days after the Academy had condemned Mr. Smith's actions and opened an inquiry into the incident. I have not directly responded to the Academy's disciplinary hearing notice, and I will fully accept any and all consequences for my conduct, he said on Friday. That's really straightforward. I deprived other nominees and winners of their opportunity to celebrate and be celebrated for their extraordinary work. He said in the statement, I am heartbroken. He said that he would accept any further consequences the board deems appropriate. Change takes time, he concluded, and I'm committed to doing the work to ensure I never again allow violence to overtake my reason. The Academy said it accepted his re resignation. Now that he is, has resigned, Mr. Smith will no longer have access to Academy screenings and events. He will also not be able to vote in the Academy Awards. However, he can still be nominated for an award since being a member is not a requirement for eligibility. In an, award, in an interview with Good Morning America, the network which also broadcast the Oscars, Mr. Packer said that after Mr. Smith had been asked to leave the ceremony, he urged the Academy leadership to not physically remove him in the middle of a live broadcast. Mr. Packer said he had learned from his co-producer, Shayla Cowan, there were discussions of plans to remove him from the venue. So he had immediately approached the Academy officials and told them that, that, Chris, that Mr. Rock, Chris Rock, did not want to make a bad situation work worth, worse. So... Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, there's a lot to be said. So now we've sort of seen all of the individual things that have uh, that have come from this event. You know, um, we and I want to talk about this. Thank you very much for the tier two sub from Cripple Punk. Thank you very, very, very much. Deeply appreciate that. Thank you. Um, let's talk about this. Okay. Wait, how is this taking responsibility? How are any of these things consequences? We will talk about that, okay? Let's let's get into it. So, first off, let's talk about uh about First of all, let's talk about Chris Rock's involvement in this. I got to say, as far as I'm concerned, Chris Rock did handle this relatively well. I think Chris Rock's joke was trash. I'm just going to say that. I think the joke about about Jada Pinkett Smith being bald is like not a funny joke. Uh, I think it, it it's a dated reference that makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Like, why would you reference a, a movie that nobody even knows about, especially the younger members of the audience? Like, nobody fucking cares about that damn movie. Um, and also, it's just a pot shot at someone's appearance. There's no there's nobody's character being roasted nobody's nothing it's just making fun of somebody's appearance and also i'm gonna assume in this case that chris doesn't know about like the history uh that jada has with hair stuff because the truth is it actually is true that jada pinkett smith has talked about hair her hair specifically and the and and her issues with hair discrimination a lot like a lot she talks about it frequently and so uh i i'm gonna assume he didn't know this but it is indeed true that this is something that's a bit of a personal issue and i want to say that like there is an angle of this in which you can analyze the joke okay here's the angle that i'm that you won't hear from anybody else okay this is the hot take you're not going to hear from anybody else it is possible for a joke to be out of line in a given context, okay? Lots of comedians are talking about how this was a joke that was made, you know, it's just a joke, It maybe it's a bomb, etc. But I want us to think for a second, because all of the things that apply to Will Smith in this circumstance can also, in at least to some degree, apply to the people who decided to include that joke the fact is the academy awards is a highly prestigious event ever like every news source in the entire world covers the academy awards because it is largely considered to be 
the most popular and important awards event of the year when it comes to films. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of eyes on, um, on the people involved with that. So the choice to deliver a joke like that at specifically at someone's expense is pretty wild. And also it's very odd that Chris Rock chose to roast Jada and not Will Smith, even though it was Will Smith who was the one who was making the movie and therefore I would be receiving the award and therefore should ideally be the target of a roast. It is weird. It's, it is, um, kind of uncomfortable and also seems a little bit out of line that both the Academy and Chris Rock would be okay with targeting Jada Pinkett Smith, who was not there, who was there as like a, a guest of her husband who was there to receive an award. Yeah. Imagine inviting a guy to give him an award and then having a joke that insults his wife. And also let's think about another angle of this, because again, I want to be as charitable as possible, okay? To both sides, to all the sides involved in this. The movie that 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 Will Smith was there for was a movie celebrating the triumph of black women. And Chris Rock chose to make a joke, not at the expense of the creator of that movie, not at the expense of the movie itself, but at the expense of the black woman wife of the guy who made a movie of celebrating overcoming hardship of black women. So doesn't that, I mean, come on, like, like you got to be able to understand at least where people are coming from in being offended by that joke, right? Like, I agree. Uh, I agree that a slap is not the right response for that. And we're going to talk about that to a great extent because I want to get into the actual details of that. Um, but like, isn't it, isn't it, isn't it, doesn't it feel like kind of fucked up that like, that prior to this slapping incident, that like the entire Academy was just sort of okay at a rand, at what is basically somebody's family member being roasted instead of the person who's there. Like, I just think that's pretty, uh, pretty cruel and rude. And I, I, I can recognize why that would make somebody emotional. Um, even though I, I, I don't think that it justifies it. I will be talking about patriarchy and toxic masculinity. Absolutely. Um, but I think I can understand why a lot of people were bothered by that joke. And also why a lot of people considered it a per a sort of like more directed slight. Does that make sense? And it's because it's, it's a confluence of factors. It's not just one thing. It's many things. It's the fact that, uh, Chris Rock chose to target somebody who wasn't there to accept an award that Chris chose to target something that that person who wasn't there to collect the award, that sort of, I guess we could call them an innocent comedy bystander, okay? He targeted an innocent an innocent bystander, and he targeted them on a medical issue that they have been very open about. So, like, Jada goes out of her way to be open about a embarrassing medical issue. Going bald is, is very difficult. Going bald is difficult for men, it's difficult for women, it's difficult for non-binary people. Losing your hair is very hard for people, especially people whose entire job is to look is to look good on screen and look and and act well and be visually uh uh viewed frequently. Um so that's a hard thing to deal with, and I think that we can understand why that would really bother some people. I hope we can at least understand why it would bother some people. Because you know, guys, just so you're aware, I don't want to make this like personal and I don't want to do the projection thing, but as somebody who's had a very minor amount of fame, internet fame, um everyone talks about your fucking looks constantly. Oh my god. Okay? People talk about my appearance uninvited on my videos constantly. If you look in my comments, all it will be is people saying that I'm fat, 
that I look like a man or whatever. It's really ridiculous. So like uh, without like do falling into the trap of projecting, basically every person who steps into the public light and puts themselves on a camera, basically every single person like that has to deal with this type of shit. And it is really hard. So I actually kind of understand where the emotional intensity can come from, from being at the most watched event in the entire world, or not the most watched event, but one of the most watched events, one of the supposedly most prestigious events in the world, and you're there, and the jackass comedian they hired makes fun of your wife for being bald, something she's talked about publicly a lot of times. You, I can kind of understand where a lot of intensity would come from on that. Does that make sense? So, um, let's move on to the next part of things. The slap itself. Is it okay? This is the question. Is it okay to engage in physical violence when somebody, uh, when somebody uses words against you? That is the fundamental question that everybody is talking about, okay? Now, do I think that this is a good example of, um, of, of like, a discussion around violence? No. I think, in fact, this is one of the stupidest discussions you can ever have, or the, the most stupidest uh, examples of, of a starting point for a discussion about uh, violence and, and discussing, Okay. Um, and I think that it's important that we step through this, even if a lot of people feel like they've already come to their minds. So let's talk about this. First off, are words, are there words that can justify a, a physically violent response? I think that's a very difficult question to answer. Let me give you a couple examples. What if somebody is standing on the uh on the corner okay we're gonna just do a couple of little hypotheticals the first one what if somebody in your big city is standing on the corner of the road and they are handing out manuals uh in which they say okay um in which they say uh we believe that all people uh, of a certain type should be eliminated basically you have genocidal people in your town advocating actively for people to participate in 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 eliminating another type of person i think a lot of people maybe not everybody but i think a lot of people would say that could justify a a a violent response and i think i can understand where people are coming from with that right somebody is actively advocating for harm to come to you and the ones you love they might even be detailing how it can happen, okay? I don't even know if it matters if they have quote-unquote real power. I think that you can say it is an... I think that it is relatively reasonable to understand how someone could come to the conclusion that, uh, that like, somebody who's advocating for the death of yourself and others who's advocating to change the system in such a way that you would die i think that it that that it can be justifiable to respond to that type of person um somewhat violently this is the punching nazis thing do i think it's a bad thing when when, when nazis get punched and the answer is generally i don't I don't really care if somebody punches a Nazi. And the reason for that is because Nazis are actively engaging in eliminationist rhetoric and practices. That rhetoric is a part of how they build a world in which people die. And we know what their rhetoric can lead to. We've seen the Holocaust. The popularization of dehumanizing racist rhetoric can lead to a situation where people are killed en masse by a state that they can do almost nothing against. So I can understand why people react that way. That's a pretty clear-cut situation. So let's step a little bit more messy. What if a Nazi or, a, or an assumed Nazi is making jokes about genocide or jokes about the Holocaust? What if they're not actively advocating for it, or at least they say they're not, but they're still making 
jokes. They're making jokes about doing it. They're making jokes together with other people. They're soft advocating for these things, even if they're just joking. That becomes a lot harder, right? It gets a lot harder to be able to say, um, you know, well, is this really a joke? Is somebody just using quote unquote comedy and joking and irony as a shield? And of course, we know the answer is that yes, people do use irony and jokes as a shield. That that it is quite common actually for reprehensible views to cloak themselves in humor, in plausible deniability. But does that mean that you can hit somebody or do physical violence to somebody because they made an off-color joke? And I think that that's a little bit hard to tell. I think that's a harder answer, right? Because on one hand, I think you can understand why somebody might want to hit someone for using words. Like, for example, uh, if somebody, if you were, if you were in school and somebody in your school was constantly mocking you for being gay or Jewish or black and they were constantly mocking you, they were constantly cornering you and making you feel bad, humiliating you, causing you emotional harm, I think we can understand why somebody might hit back there. But it is true that it's incredibly difficult to draw the line. But let's step one further, okay? Because we're not really dealing with that situation here, are we? Chris Rock is a professional comedian. He's not a crypto Nazi. He's not a guy at a school making jokes about your ethnicity. He's a guy who makes jokes for a living. And he made a joke that was offensive, but it didn't really have to do with threatening any violence. It didn't really have to do with advocating for any major political position. It was just a mean joke. So I can't really say that I feel like this situation is even in the ballpark of situations where I think it would be okay to hit somebody. Like, at least for me personally, I can understand why, uh, like, a trans person would hit a, uh, a transphobe who was, like, directly mocking them and torturing them emotionally. I can understand why a black person would hit a racist for saying racist shit. And in fact, I think that could even be justified or argued. Uh... But this isn't that situation at all, guys. And that's one of the issues that I've had with this whole discussion. You know? Um, uh, uh, I, 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 is that everybody seems to be... Again, I said this before, but that everyone seems to be projecting different situations onto the situation at hand. It's not a situation of some racist or Nazi or whatever, making a joke about the Holocaust, or a joke, a racist joke. It is an insensitive joke uh, about the physical appearance of somebody that is extra, extra offensive because of the person there, and is certainly inappropriate. But I don't really think you can argue that it justifies physical violence. You know? I am not a pacifist, by the way. I don't believe in a pacifistic lifestyle. I think that there are times in life where violence is justified. I think we see violence in our lives all the time. But also, guys, this is a rich people dinner. This is not a conflict between an avowed racist and uh, a, a, an activist. This is not a conversation between a politician and 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 uh, 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 a a person who is going to be affected by their laws it's a conflict between one of the richest actors who's ever lived and one of the richest comedians who has ever lived you know 
And one of the things that I've seen in all of these responses is, is again, I've said it like three times, the projection. But what I what I mean to, to fixate on is the hyperbole. We heard it in that clip of Dana Carvey and, uh, and David Spade where they were like, you know, I just don't know what to expect anymore. What's next? Are they going to ban roasts? And I don't think those guys were joking. Like, they're comedians, but they're sharing their genuine thoughts. And... <laughs> They're, they're acting as though they were talking about being triggered as though they experienced witnessing uh, their own personal bullying moment. And I really think that's not a healthy way to respond. At the end of the day, it was a slap, not a shotgun, not a gun, not a punch, not a stabbing. It was a slap. And that is not to defend Will Smith. That's just to tell people holy shit, please, for the love of God, keep the grips on. Keep grips on what the actual situation is. People who are talking about this being the end of comedy or or that this is representative of how people view are, are totally out in the wrong. You're just in a fantasy world. The, and there's a lot of responses like this. Like I said, multiple major news sources were calling it the slap heard round the world, drawing comparison to the outbreak of two world of two wars, one the revolution and second the world and uh, second world war 1, which is absurd to me. That is ridiculous uh, in response. One rich guy slapped another rich guy. Now, I do happen to think that that Will Smith was out of line for slapping him for this joke. But at the same time, I can also understand uh, that while he made a mistake, there was a, there were other mistakes going on at that time. The the Academy Awards should not have been OK with that type of joke, especially given that it's not like it's not a comedy show. They lightly roast people there. It's a show that's supposed to celebrate the arts. And also, it's a show that presents itself as a, a, a clean, uh, neutral, and legitimate source. Which we all know is not entirely true. That it's just another sort of corporate award show like any other. But it is the one that every single news source in the world is going to cover. And as a result, that means whoever they invite on to perform is ultimately going to be saying every joke that they make to an enormous audience of people. What I think is that it was a bad showing on all sides. However, I must say, I think that as far as this all goes, Will Smith and Chris Rock uh, handled the aftermath quite well. And I mean that. The fact that Chris Rock like, first of all, just sort of steadied himself and continued the show does speak well to his ability to keep his head cool. That's a pretty impressive thing to do. And also, uh, I think that it's res that it's not just respectful, but rational that he would not want them to remove physically remove Will Smith. And as we read in this article, Chris Rock specifically said, I don't want um, to... Uh, I don't want to, uh, to, to like, have him physically removed. Um, and Will Smith's response is good. He offered a direct apology for something that was wrong to do. And for the record, I do think it was wrong for him to slap Chris Rock. I don't think it's the end of comedy. I don't think that it's representative of the, uh, of the worst violence in the world. But I do think that it was not a good move for him in any way. It wasn't fair to Chris. Even though Chris made a mean joke, I don't think that he did anything worthy of getting hit over by another person, let alone getting hit uh, in the face on a stage in front of the entire world. That is a very, very severe thing uh, visually to do in response to a joke, even if that joke is bad. But there is one more thing we have to talk about in this circumstance before we get to our final takeaway, which is inevitably toxic masculinity. And I think there's something to be talked about here. I think there is something to be talked about here because we still do have a culture uh, that encourages um, all kinds of terrible behavior between men 
over women. Okay? Oh, yeah. Here's a great example, by the way. Just so you know, here's a great example of the type of misogyny I was talking about. Here's a here's the verified uh, uh, bread tuber, uh, Peter Coffin. So what we just learned, what the world just learned, is that Jada is an abusive partner. What? The fuck? What are you fucking talking about? The fuck are you talking about? How do you come to that conclusion? How the fuck do you come to the conclusion that Jada is abusive when you see Will Smith slap uh, Chris Rock? Just stupid. But again, it's weird how that's the takeaway that a lot of people had. A lot of people immediately jumped to Jada. And I have to talk about that because we were just about to talk about toxic masculinity. Okay? Toxic masculinity is not the only form of toxic gender role or gender, uh, uh, gender, let's put it, uh, let's say gender coercion that exists in the world, okay? Toxic masculinity is absolutely not the only one, but it is by far the most prevalent. We live in a world that has been for a thousand plus years dominated by a highly patriarchal religion. Patriarchy like runs through our society almost part and parcel to the world that we understand. It's terrible and it's very fucked up. Okay. Um, so this idea of toxic masculinity being involved here, I can't help but think is somewhat there. Um, from, from the very beginning, from the fact of, of Chris Rock targeting, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith instead of Will Smith, to piss off Will Smith from Will Smith going up and feeling like he needs to become physically violent to sort of defend his to defend women. And that was what Will Smith initially said. Initially, the reason he cited was that he defends women. But what does defending women really mean? I think that's a really complicated thing. Did you guys know that men do stuff on behalf of their women that their women never ask them to do? Like all the time men uh in in our society are taught that basically uh they are the shepherd of their wife and that means they have to protect their wife that means if their wife is uh making them look bad they have to kind of step in the way of it and this has all kinds of of sort of down river or downstream effects on our society and it's very weird because it comes from a very outdated understanding of the world, but also its existence leads some people uh, to never really think about what's going on there and to have a very, what I would consider, inaccurate approach to analyzing these issues. Because a lot of men think that if you, uh, if a guy, a lot of, a lot of, it, it, again, this is good, this is really hard to explain. A lot of men think that other men are doing the bidding of their wives when they get into fights with men. It's, it's so messed up. It's so, uh, such an unwell approach to the world. But I bet a lot of you know this is true. I bet a lot of the men in my audience know this and have experienced this for themselves. That you, um, that you've encountered men basically accusing other men of doing things because it's their, it's their, because their wife is making them. There's even jokes about people being whipped. There's jokes about like it's all over the place. Being, uh, you know, being whipped, having the old ball and chain. This is all of this stuff still tangles together, and it's absolutely present here. And the fact that 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 um, Will Smith's response to immediately being criticized about this was to say, I'm doing it to defend women. And then a lot of men go, see, Jada made him do it. That is a very fucked up way of approaching things. And that way of approaching things permeates the way we talk about gender issues in our society, permeates the ways in which we talk about conflicts between men and women in our society, and conflicts between men and men, and conflicts between women and women. 
our society is distorted by these toxically masculine interpretations of, of quote-unquote chivalry that say that men need to do things at all times on behalf of and often without consulting their wife. And when men do stuff, their wives get blamed for it. And I find that a very odd thing. And I can't help but think that there was a lot of toxic ma masculinity on display here. The idea that, like, Chris Rock thought it was okay to write a joke that insults Will Smith by insulting his wife is, is a thing that people do. People target people's wives. That, like, dudes, dudes will target other dudes' wives as a way of pissing them off. And I think that's a bad thing to do. And then, of course, this prompted the response of people being toxic directly to Jada, even though it was Will who did the slap. And even afterwards, by the way, the really messed up thing is that now that Will Smith has apologized and left the uh, left the academy, there are a bunch of people who still blame Jada, even though Jada Pinkett Smith didn't do any of the things involved here. There are going to be thousands and millions of people just because of cultural prejudice unchallenged cultural prejudice who continue to ban who, who continue to blame jada for this even though she wasn't even in, like physically involved yeah people are looking for jada to apologize but what the fuck did she do this was all amplified by the fact that will smith was on the world stage doing that as one of the most popular actors in the world true but and 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 again that's true but remember all of the jokes are being made on the world stage as well. So while I don't think the j jokes justified a slap, you can understand why the jokes might hurt even more being that they're being broadcast on such a level. Now, there's another thing that I wanted to talk about too, which is that some people will say, well, you know, don't we believe in punching up? Don't we believe, I mean, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith are two of the strongest and most rich and most powerful and most influential people in Hollywood. D isn't it okay for a comedian to punch up at them? And that's true. But remember, this was the comedian who was hired by the Academy to go to an event full of rich and powerful people. There's no punching up. It's all punching sideways. Everyone involved in this situation is incredibly rich and incredibly influential. There is no punching up going on here whatsoever. So I don't think that like that is a valid approach to this. If it was some tiny comedian who was getting blown up over this, yes, I would think that's the case. But that's not the case. Chris Rock is fucking crazy famous and crazy rich. So I don't think that like the idea of him punching up is like a good, a good like way of it doesn't add anything to the analysis of this situation. At the end of the day, the 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 academy uh, sort of allowed a, a a pretty what I would consider to be a pretty offensive joke to to fly through, and that happened, and the response was an act of violence, which I think was out of line. But please, once again, let me please ask you to keep things in scope, just because it was wrong. For Chris, uh, so, sorry, for Will Smith to slap Chris Rock, even though that's definitely not a good thing, it's still just a slap. The physical damage done is pretty minor. No one was particularly badly hurt in this situation, and in fact, it looks like uh, Will Smith is going to really pay for this happening. He's no longer in the academy. He's issued a public apology. He's having um he's having a huge disciplinary hearing and he's already said that he's not going to push back against any of it. Um I think I think Will Smith is going to definitely pay due recompense for this for this fuck up. But at the same time I think it's important for all of us to realize how outrageous the commentary on this event has gotten and also what it sort of says about the uh, confounding effects of the spectacle. Uh, there is, like, did anything productive come of this at all outside of my stream that I'm doing right now? Not really. Nothing really productive happened. No d discourse was advanced. No one came to any understandings. All we had was a bunch of, co uh, you know, 
people communicate commentators sort of projecting their own problems off it and the thing that was most annoying to me was that it wasn't just it was all virtue signaling all fucking virtue signaling and and on both sides everybody makes fun of like the woke types for being like this was an attack against uh jada's jada's hair type but what about the what about the anti-woke types people who are screaming about how this is the end of comedy and how this is a sign that zoomers uh that like the or not the zoomers that the modern uh the modern world can't handle comedy anymore that this is the end of the art of comedy the people who said it's the the slap heard around the world the 9-11 of comedy like guys Come the fuck on. The the fever pitch in the discourse all around this was wild. Notice that in this video that you just watched, this discussion, this drama mama with me, we were able to rationally weigh out the different sizes of this. In this conversation, we talked about toxic masculinity. We talked about unnecessary violence. We talked about when violence goes too far. We talked about alopecia. We talked about hair discrimination. All of that, none of it, and, and it was a super interesting conversation that you're all here engaging in without ever engaging in absolutely absurd hyperbole. Right? So it is possible. And we can have productive and meaningful discussions on this. They just don't happen most of the time because of this endless addiction to vapid spectacle. And also... Because the world is a bit depressing and everybody's very angry at one another and everyone is looking at something to fight over. Uh, so, what about the hypermasculine types talking about how they would Izuna drop Will Smith off the stage? Oh, of course there's all those people. There's all of the people who want to talk like they're the hardest motherfuckers. I called these people the net bangers earlier in this stream. They talk like they're super hard. They're like, if it was me, I would just I would just punch Will Smith back and he would go flying away and I'd be awesome and everybody would clap. But like those people are just patently ridiculous on the front. That's just posturing. It's literally just empty like, I'm so cool. I made a joke about this. I, I t tweeted a joke about this. Hold on, let me see if I can find it here. Where's my damn joke? I made a joke about this the other day. Hold on. Here we go. This was the joke I made about this on the day that it happened. If I was Will, Will Smith, I simply would have slapped him harder. And if I was Chris Rock, I would have simply dodged that weak-ass slap. This is why I've never been given an Academy Award. I'd be too fa powerful. God would fear for his life, and the Academy is in cahoots with God to keep me out of heaven. This is, this is why I made this tweet because people were being so ridiculous about, about the, the fucking slap. And that's been my takeaway. So, by the way, we are moving... Um, we're moving into the position where I, where there's no more, like, like we're out of the main drama mama segment and now we're just purely into my opinions, which is my final opinion on this is holy fucking shit. Relax. You people. It was a slap. Nobody was executed on stream on screen. Yes. Was it shitty of Will Smith to slap a comedian over a poor, a poorly landing joke? Was it shitty to make that joke in the first place? Yes. But at the end of the day, a dude got slapped and that's it. That's all that happened. This is not the, this is not the hill on which racism, discrimination, toxic masculinity, violence, or the future of comedy will be decided. In fact, everyone will forget about this in a month. Nobody will remember this in a fucking month. But that didn't stop every single person on the entire planet from writing about this as if it was the end of the world. And I think that that's like one of the things that really gets me. Like, there, the the addiction to the addiction to uh to uh s spectacle, the addiction to uh uh over exaggeration, to to uh making everything into the be all end all issue. The fact that like that we cart out social justice language, that we cart out uh things like the end of comedy for a slap that happened between two ultra rich guys at the Academy Awards, to me indicates that we've got nothing better to talk about. 
You think this is the kind of the meme of the year? Not going to happen. Not going to happen. There's going to be some fucking uh, distorted animal picture will become the meme of the year that everyone remembers. And people will forget about this fucking shit. Yeah. Doge 2. Yeah, Doge 2 will arrive. And guys, another thing. I do think that people are being really weird about the fact that, like, immediately Will Smith offered a really, really good apology. Um, like, 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 I do think it's weird that Will Smith offered, like, one of the best Hollywood apologies I've ever seen in my entire life and nobody gave a shit. That, like, he actually admitted being wrong and nobody gave a shit. And then now they're like showering fucking uh, uh, Louis C.K. with awards, even though Louis C.K. fucking sexually assaulted somebody and was like fucking not apologetic at all. Th that That's another thing, just so we know, okay? Don't think I don't fucking see that shit. Now, there have been some very funny responses to all of this. Um, I have seen some people uh, saying that, like, if you're white and you talk about the Will Smith slap, you're, like, doing cultural appropriation because it's a black person's issue. Um, I've seen white people, like, like posting three, three five to five tweet threads where they're like, I have decided to remain silent and let black folks with an X speak on this. I, I'm recusing myself as a whitey. I'm recusing. Like, guys, stop it. Holy fuck. Wait, did Candace Owens do a video on it? Holy shit. We should react to that. It is the, the most embarrassing thing in the world when a bunch of people try to, like, virtue signal by being like, listen up, white folks. I'm taking the lead. I being being the I'm being the exemplar white by loudly announcing that I won't have an opinion on this. Come on. Come on. Just shut the fuck up. Either have an opinion or fucking don't and move on. Don't do this fucking thing where every every single uh pop culture event has to be a a personal uh crucifixion about whether or not you can talk about it or not. Yeah, I didn't just watch the slap. I sat my white ass down and listened to the slap. Oh, it's so painful. Holy fuck, it's so painful. <laughs> Grime Dango says, guys, at least 20% of the celebrities that were there were high on drugs you haven't even heard of. Literally true. These people live lives you can't even imagine. They're, this is the equivalent of like... You know what this is the equivalent of? This is the equivalent of fixating on, like, royal court drama. It's like, did you hear? Did you hear what Tyrion Lannister said about Cersei at the at the king's feast? Did you hear? Did you hear what Ned Stark said to, to Caitlyn Stark in the corner of the king's bathroom? It's literally a bunch of unfathomably rich people who are fainting and and bending over themselves backwards to tell you that you need to care about one of them slapping another one two rich guys fucking st probably stoned out of their goddamn minds go and fucking get in a slap fight and the entire world has to listen to it so no even though i went out of my way in this drama mama to to be as good faith as possible, even though I went out of my way to talk about all of the issues going into it, at the end of the day, the the real thing, the real frustration I have is the fact that so many people got so fucking worked up about it. Why do I have to have it? Why am I having... I don't have to, obviously. I'm doing it because everybody else is talking about it as well, and I feel like my opinion is better. But the truth is, how the fuck did we get here? I'm a week late. There was... Half of the internet's content has been around moral issues over the slap. Not, not 
Haha, the slap happened. Wow, Chris Rock's an asshole. Wow, Will Smith's an asshole. Whatever. It's instead, oh my god, can you believe that X person that I know of supported Will Smith? Can you believe that? Can you believe it? We, we must, oh my god. And then on the other side, it's like, can you believe they're going to ban roasts forever? This was comedy's 911. What if Chris Rock, what if Chris Rock had died from that slap? What if that slap had blown his head up? The slap, but with ragdoll physics? Is this for real? Oh my God, somebody made a fucking edit with ragdoll physics. Let's see. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> Damn, they did a good job with that. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> They did a good job! That's well edited! Damn! That's really well done! Oh, that's so sick! Whew! Damn, there's a lot of edits of this. That's wild. Doesn't it feel like when an event like this happens, doesn't it kind of feel like the internet rolls back in time and you get a bunch of just like edit memes, memes that are just funny edits? This is often T. This is often T did an animation. Let's see. Oh, Richard. <laughs> uh, out your fucking mouth. <laughs> okay, to be fair, that is how people are acting. That is kind of how people are, are acting about it. Have I ever played Kingdom Hearts? Of course I've played Kingdom Hearts. Can we get another Kingdom Hearts meme in here? G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. It's, that, was a, that was a nice one. <laughs> oh, wow. God, the ending is perfect. That ending is God tier. All right, that's a great ending, okay? That's fucking sick.